I wanted to, at the end, try and give some recommendations based on who you are. And I kind of make these different archetypes and I've said that, Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate and give my thoughts on that and some recommendations. We're going to start off by taking an initial look at what is the overall goal of the certificate and then I will tell you guys what I think is good what I think is bad, and then I'm gonna give you guys some recommendations based on who you are, if you are a student, if you are a entry level trying to change careers, or if you are experienced. And then at the end, I have a challenge for you guys who are taking the certificate to see if you guys can use what you are learning in a interview setting. So starting out, they say that this is what you're gonna learn, and these are some of the details about the certificate. Now you can see, I wanna mark a couple of things off. So you can see what you will learn, gain an immersive understanding of the practices and processes used by junior, or associate data analysts in their day-to-day -day job. Understand how to clean and organize data for analysis, um, calculations using spreadsheets, SQL and R programming. So we have some stuff which is soft skills, we have some stuff which is um, technical skills. Learn key analytical skills, data cleaning, analysis and visualization, and tools, spreadsheets, SQL, R, let's just mark these off, spreadsheets, SQL, R, R programming and Tableau. Learn how to visualize and present data findings in dashboards, presentations, and commonly used visual visualization platforms. So already I can tell you that this is a lot of information. You know, you have spreadsheets, you have SQL, you have R program, you have Tableau. Um, those are all different technical skill sets that you know can take you much more than six months to truly, truly master. Um, and some of these processes will also take you time to get into it. And I do notice though that they do say junior or associate data analyst and I think that is very very important to remember as we go through this. Um, skills you will gain, you can see they have marked up a couple of things there. Um, just some tags based on what you read above. Um, online course which is good. Um, flexible schedule, beginner level. Um, they say approximately six months to complete and the pace is 10 hours a week. Um, and that you get a shareable certificate. So keep that in mind. You know, it's it's uh, aimed at junior or associate data analyst. Six months is what they say, and ter 10 hours a week. Uh, which I think, you know, for a junior or data or associate data analyst role, I think that is realistic. Um, and then you have to think about what is your goal and where are your strengths or weaknesses and how that fits in here. You also have to think about the timeline. Six months, 10 hours a week. How does that how does that fit in with you? But that is the initial look. Now, what did I think is good? I think that the instructors are quite good. I think that it, they have a good pace and they explain things very well. Um, it is outlined like these other certificates. It takes away a lot of, a lot of uh, that information overload. But then again, you have to be good at not overloading yourself with looking at a lot of other things at the same time. Then you have to be able to focus on this and keep a focus while you are doing this. And that is often more of a challenge you know you, you want to learn something so bad and there's so much going on there's you know you're reading all these articles you're looking at looking at YouTube looking at my videos I talk about something cool and then you're like oh I want to learn more about that you know remember that they've said this is six months ten hours a week for junior or associate data analysts which are beginner positions um, I think that they've done a really good job outlining the data analysis process, um, which is easy to understand throughout the course. And I think that's such a key element and something that will help you a lot in the beginning because technical skills takes time to learn, it takes time to uh, instill, but but process, if, you, if you're already good at processes, maybe you learn to master that in school or maybe at a different job, then that is something you can reuse in a lot of these concepts, even though it is new theory. Um, I think they've done a good job with a lot of tests, examples, reading and practical assignments. That is good. So each course has a lot of relevant information, which I think is really good to have been exposed to, but that actually quite naturally takes us over to one of the things, one of the things I think are bad. And that is that I do believe this is information overload. It is a lot of new information to digest. And I do think it takes more than six months to instill all of this and learn this and remember these things and, and apply it. But I do think that it is, a lot of good information which do set you up for those junior roles but that doesn't mean that you're going to know all of this when you start to apply for those or when you start to think about taking those jobs or when you start those jobs there will still be gaps some of it will be filled out throughout the job and some of it will come maybe you want to take a look at this in three months or six months if you're willing to to kind of refresh when you can actually 
connect it to, to more hands-on experience. I also, like I just said, you're going to forget a lot of it. What new information aligns best with your personality and previous experiences? And I think that's something that you might want to think about. Out of the stuff that you're learning through the certificate or if you're thinking about taking it, when you look at the syllabus, when you look at the information, you might want to pick up, okay, this information actually is something that I can tell I know about this. I just need to figure out how I can take this information and tie it into those concepts I learned before. Or if there are just parts of the data analysis process that just meshes very well with your personality, you might want to put a star next to that and focus on that because you're probably going to remember that and be able to apply and talk about that a lot more than some of the other things. Technical skills knowledge. Uh, I, I do feel like the level is aimed towards junior data analyst and associate analyst roles. Um, and that is a little bit hard to keep in mind as you are working on it because when you are working on these things, it's, it's hard to, you don't really know where you are before you are really working on real life problems. And that's when you start to hit the wall and you will only, it, it takes time. You know, it's gonna take time for you to build these skills. But right now I can definitely say that the, the level that they put it at is definitely junior or associate. Um, and I don't think there's enough practice and application in the course. But then again, a lot of times when you get a junior or a associate uh, role, they, they accept that you, you understand, like you know a little bit about the concepts and they already accept that, but we're gonna teach you all this. We're gonna teach you how to actually do it practically if you join us, which is why I'm so, I think it's so good that they focus a lot on the process because that from the way I see it is if you're good at the process, if you're good at explaining that, you can get that part that can get you through the door and then you're gonna have to pick up the technical stuff as you develop in the role. Um, I just wrote down that last two co uh, courses aren't done, so I can't take those into consideration. Um, it would have been interesting to see what the capstone project looks like, but that's not possible. So I wanted to, at the end, try and give some recommendations based on who you are. And I've kind of made these different archetypes and I've said that, you know, you have students, you have people who are entry level, um, who are changing careers. You have, I have, you know, people who have some relevant experience and people who have more relevant experience. And what I've done is I've tried to just uh, answer some different questions here. So should you take it? I think if you're a student or entry level, you should definitely take this because I think it will give you, uh, it will give you a foundation and it will expose you to some, some information that you probably haven't heard before. Maybe you are reinforcing some things, but, but otherwise I think it's a good, it's a good foundation builder. If you have relevant job experience, zero to one years, I've said maybe, because you might wanna reinforce some gaps. Maybe that is what this will do for you. If you have relevant experience, I've just said maybe in case you wanna repeat some concepts or you just wanna brush off on stuff or you just think, hey, this would be a cool CV builder or something, then why not go for it? Um, and then I've written, you know, what can you expect? Uh, like I just mentioned, you know, for the student and entry levels, I think this can create a foundation, a knowledge-based foundation. Relevant jobs, either it'll reinforce gaps or it'll be repetition. Now, what do you need to add? Now, I think if you're a student or entry level, I do think you need a portfolio or you need some sort of um, previous experience where you can tie some of these concepts to that. When I say previous experience, that can be that Maybe at a previous company, you, you worked within operations or uh, some sort of role where you can look at the role and you can understand when you look at the data analysis process, you can look at what you were doing in the previous role and you can say, okay, this concept actually could have applied to that step. This would have uh, improved that step. And when I'm going to talk about, you know, asking the right questions or preparing data, then that is, you know, that, then, then I can use examples from my job to, to exemplify how I understand the concept. As a student, if you want a more hands-on uh, example, then a portfolio uh, could be good. That could also be good if you're entry level. I've also written that as student or entry level, you need to practice SQL, Excel, and data visualization while you are taking this. And the reason for that is you don't need to do it throughout the entire course. I think when you start the certificate, if you want to do it, I think it's good to start and just focus on the process, uh, process for, for those parts of the beginning. But then when you get into more the more practical stuff, I think a little bit of extra practice as they go through these parts, you should also do that. I think that would help you a lot. Um, for the people who have relevant experience, I've said that you know if you have identified some gaps, then you should work on that, whether it is process oriented or it is technical skills. And if you have if you have relevant job experience, you know two to five years, I would say this is too basic for you. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't spend the time. I would take the theoretical knowledge, I would reinforce, and, and that's just about it. Um, and then I've said, is it enough to get an entry-level job? And on student entry-level, I've, I've said yes. Look at the next page, can you do that? And we will get, uh, get to that. Um, if you have relevant uh, job experience, either zero to one years or two to five years, if you have zero to one, I'd say, uh, yes, it, it could help you get an entry-level job, but if you have been working for zero to one year, maybe you wanna try to go for more established roles. Maybe this can help you reinforce some gaps and then you can go for those. Um, if you have been working for two to five years, I don't think you should be focusing on entry-level jobs, so you shouldn't really think about that. Um, and the last thing that I want to touch on is what makes you stand out. And what I, may, what I mean by that is what makes you stand out is combined with this, what are other things that they will maybe think about when they look at you, depending on where you are. So if you're a student, often you will be viewed as someone who can be shaped into someone who fits into the team because you don't come with any pre-notions of how a job process should be or how this job should be done. Um, and that you are hungry to learn. So, so that combined with what uh, what you can create, kind of foundation you can create, can make you stand out. And then, of course, if you add the, if you add a portfolio and some extra extra practice, then I think that can make you stand out. Now, if you are entry level, you are changing careers. What will make you stand out is is that you actually have real job experience and that you also are showing that you are hungry hungry to learn. So these these this certification with some extra steps. Um, that those things together can make you stand out now of course if you have relevant job experience first of all is that you know you have relevant job experience and you can handle the job and that is what's gonna make you stand out compared to someone who's either a student or a entry level and then maybe this will give you some more more value but honestly it really depends on the gaps that you are going to try and reinforce if you decide to decide to take this and if you have relevant job experience I haven't written anything there because I don't think uh, this is gonna help you stand out I think you are beyond that, but I think it, it will give the most value for students or entry-level people who are changing careers, and I would say those are the ones this is really for, uh, this, this certificate. So the chance that I have for you if you are either student or entry-level is to look at the outline data analysis process, you know, ask, prepare, process, analyze, share, and act. This is the process that they outlined uh, in the certificate. And then I've written, can you give an example of performing a task in each of these stages, or have you have been involved in any of these stages, and either tie it to a project, a portfolio, or a previous job experience. <clears throat> and try to think about that. You know, these are different steps in the data analysis process. You should be touching on those somehow, uh, either in a in a project or in different places in your portfolio, or if you're entry level and you're coming from a different job, Try and see how you can look at this process and how you can explain that using specific examples because that is what people are going to look for. Examples and how you have been involved in some of the different steps of the data analysis process. Those are some of my thoughts on the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate. I hope that helps you guys out. Maybe that gives you guys some other things to think about. Either way, I think it is a good start. But just like with anything else that I try to talk about on this channel, you need to look at your own situation your own timeline, your own expect expectations, your own goals, where you are and how you're going to use this information in a different setting and not only think about what you're learning and then thinking that putting up that certificate badge is gonna do everything for you. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.